another episode of the Launchpad. My name is Grant and today I'm joined by a very special guest. I'm here with Sully. Sully, how you doing, man? I am fantastic. What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Dude. I'm excited to chat with you and just kind yeah. of talk about talk about life, talk about your career as a DJ, um, and just kind of see where our conversation goes here. Cool. Um, so I know you got a couple uh, tour dates coming up here. Um, mm -hmm. We just wrapped up 2022 just starting up in 2023 is there mm -hmm. something you're looking forward to the most this year in 2023 yeah um so one big thing i can't really talk about but that that's coming soon um on the show front at least um yeah so as far as the show front goes um i'm very excited for jeb and jam this weekend uh which i know is you know in your backyard i have yep. you know i haven't played in arizona in forever and it's kind of like the first festival it's in the desert like kicks off the season for me uh because all of december and january i pretty much took off just to work on music and whatnot so this would be like the first opportunity i really get to play out music um and on top of that i just have like a steady you know a steady rolling out of shows over the next few months it's like you know once a week or once every other week, you know, we're going to Fort Lauderdale um, or I'm going to Fort Lauderdale next weekend um, and then followed by Air, uh, Austin, Texas with Champagne Drip and then Toledo. Um, and then it's just kind of one off dates until uh, we roll around um, into the summer, you know, festival season, which, you know, festivals are starting to get booked up on that front. Um, and then the you know, what's being currently booked right now is uh, my debut headline tour, which is, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. And that will be in the fall. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, how excited are you for that uh, debut headline tour? Yeah. Uh, it's, what, what are your, what are your feelings <laughs> going into that? That's, that sounds awesome. That's like a dream come true right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, most definitely. I think it's, it's definitely like, I, I feel like when, when I started making music, it was like that pipeline dream I had. I've always envisioned myself doing that. But at the end of the day, I was just making music to make music because I loved it. And it's actually a really surreal feeling to think that's even being put into motion and being a pot and it's a possibility right now. It's a, I feel like it's, you know, this moment that I've been really like working hard towards and I'm looking forward to it, man. It's uh, it's going to be coupled with my debut album. So, you know, I'm, I'm just looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. That's awesome, man. What when's that uh, when's that album coming out? So the plan right now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say tentatively right now, because we have dates, but mm -hmm. you know, just because of how things can shift around when you're working with labels, um, you just never know. Um, so the album is going to start rolling out in August. Uh first single will come out. Um, and then September, another single will come out. And then the plan as of right now is the first week of October, second week of October, the, the full LP will come out. Um, similar to how Taboo kind of rolled out his album yeah. this past year, how he did the Grizz collab. And then he mm -hmm. did the Boogie T and um, the Boogie T collab after that. It would be similar to that sort of rollout. Um, yeah. Yeah. And right now it's um, right now on the track list. I have 14 songs um and and i'm gonna say give or take two you know i'm yeah. still working on a couple of other demos might replace a couple but um you know i'm i'm super pumped about it it's gonna be awesome nice man yeah i'm excited to hear it i'm excited to listen to it yeah. uh i know you spent like the last couple of months just grinded away on uh, some new music any uh, mm -hmm. particular track that you're i'm um, very excited to release yeah um so actually it's funny the vocalist came over today and we recorded the we've, we've recorded the final vocals for this song that I'm working on that's going on the LP. Um, she's super talented. Her name's Jesse Kovitz, um, and it's a song that we've been writing together. Honestly, it's only been about. It was one of those la the like the latest tracks that I've written for the LP. It was like she came over uh, because I know her manager, and she came over because she was visiting Mi Michigan, and we just it instantly clicked. Um, so it was like the last song that I've added to the LP, but it's just too good to not include. Yeah. Um, and it's like very on on theme with the record. Um, so yeah, I'm stoked for that one. Um, and then on top of that, just like 
I mean, there. I, I think they all like have a special place in my heart because some of them are newer, like Demons, for example. But then there's mm-hmm. songs that are on the record that are like three or four years old. Um, and then there's there's one that's like six years old. And it's just, you know, it's taken twists and turns. And it, part of it was finding the right vocalist for it. But there's been so many like mountains that it's traveled um, to get to the point, you know, that it's at. Um, so I, it's a very diverse record, but it's all under the same kind of roof uh, or theme, if you will, which which I'm really excited about because I haven't really written anything that's like super conceptual before. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a, it's not like it's not like a concept album like Tommy by, you know, the who or anything like that. But it's it's got a, like an underlying theme, which is cool. Cool, man. Yeah, it sounds like you've put a lot of hard work and thought into this. So that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, with your tour coming up, are there any uh, particular cities or venues or anything that you're looking forward to most or um, yeah. someone you're hoping to play? Well, it's not like, I guess it's not, it, the, you know, my agent's booking it at the moment, mm-hmm. but it's not, nothing is like set in stone. Yeah. As of right now, they're, they have like what's called holds and whatnot. So they're going mm-hmm. through and like, you know, booking out, you know, booking out potential dates yeah. and whatnot. So um, nothing like nothing that like jumps out, but you know, I'm always going to be excited to play in the hometown if that ends up happening. Um, Like anything in Michigan always just, just feels like a, you know, a big hug, I guess you can say Um, that always feels great. And then um, yeah, like uh, Denver is always one of my favorites. So anything in the Pacific Northwest as well, you know, I really hope that dates like that work out for, you know, doing a headline tour. That'd be awesome. Nice, man. Cool. Um, okay. So I did want to ask you, uh, cause you did just post on Instagram, you posted, um, a couple songs that you're working on mm-hmm. right now. Um, a yeah. couple flips in there. Mm-hmm. Um, any of those tracks that you're, um, pretty excited about or like walk, walk me through some of those tracks yeah. and kind of what went into, went into those mm-hmm. ones there. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I'm working on, I'm working on my record right now. And I've kind of given myself a couple of hard dates to follow. So when my manager Loper and I first sat down a couple of months ago, and that's the other thing about this like record and tour, it's a very fresh idea. Like I've been writing it and putting it together, but as mm-hmm. far as it being official, like, Hey, let's do it. Let's do an LP. Let's do it. Like, let's do a tour. That's like, maybe a two month idea at this point. Um, so the wheels are starting to turn on it, but I've given myself dates. Uh, right. So I figure when I found out about it in like early December, like this is going to be our game plan. Um, and we went through all of our, you know, all the tunes that we had, I was like, okay, there's like a encompassing theme here. I'm going to give myself until the end of January to just write as many things as I can, whether they're night, you know, 16 bar drops or like, 90 second ideas, anything like that, throw them into the melting pot and see if any of those. And that's why I say maybe something will slide in, maybe something will slide out on on this record. It's kind of me just making a bunch of things that I can pull from. Yeah. Um, so I figured, you know, end of January, that would be a hard cutoff. Like, hey, like, let's let's stop working on new ideas at this point. And then I'm going to give myself until mid-May to pick the best songs for the the record. And I have until mid-May to just fo- polish everything up, make it as good as it can be, um, and then go from there. Um, so all those clips, to answer your question, I know I kind of rambled there, but to answer your question, um, the clips are some of the ideas that I've made in the last few weeks, uh, pretty much you know, from January 1st or maybe a little bit before that all the way up until now um so just like you know i'm writing every day coming up with it trying to come up with new stuff all the time um a couple of collabs on or a collab i think it was the peekaboo collab i put on there yeah um that i'm super pumped about um yeah yeah you know just i'm just writing that that was more or less a showcase of what i've been working on in this new year i guess you could say that's awesome man it's clear Mm -hmm. you got some incredible talent uh when it comes to producing and making music Um, thanks dude how do you stay motivated to like, mm-hmm. keep making all this music? Cause like you say, mm-hmm. you've been doing it now for at least just like the last two months have kind of like locked yourself in a studio and have come out with like a ton of tracks. And I'm sure there's mm-hmm. like a lot you're working on that you haven't even uh, 
shared with anyone at this point right either. yeah um, most, most of it i haven't shared i have i actually i would say the majority of the record i have not played out live once oh wow oh so, yeah a lot of it and i think i'm gonna keep it that way too mm. um like keep it kind of like under the radar mm. yeah i like that how do, yeah so how, how do you like keep that motivation how do you um stay motivated to get into the studio and keep making music like that yeah. Um, you know, I think that's something that not only artists have to tackle every day, but people like, you know, like you probably have to tackle that every day. Like, how do you go, how do you show up to work motivated? You know, um, that's a, like, that's a challenge that you're going to face every single day. So like everybody else, I'm human. You know, I have my days where I don't get a lot done and I have my days where I write two songs in a day, you know? Um, and I think the answer to that is just routine. And, um, yeah, I've been I've been producing for 12 years now um, and I'm getting I, I like to think that I'm getting better every day and I'm always making advancements in my in my production and my songwriting and whatnot. But not every day is going to be a win. Um, so I think it's just about, you know, sticking to a routine so that even on your bad days, you can bounce back the next day and have a success story. And for me, um, lately. You know, like for 20, so for 2022, my big thing was my resolution, if you will, mm -hmm. was to kick all the bad habits out of my life. So for me, um, I've been nicotine for almost or nicotine free for almost 300 days now, which has nice. been awesome. That's right. um, yeah, it, it, like that's, that was a huge thing for me. I've been working out, um, getting back into the gym, which has been awesome uh, for like the last two or three months now, uh, you know, every day during the week, uh, me and my girlfriend will go. And then, um, you know, just like adopting like little things into my yeah. routine, like instead of figuring out what I'm going to do on the day of the night before, I'll just send myself a, an email and mm -hmm. say, what do I want to get done and do like time blocking um, instead of just scrambling and trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, like, for instance, last week, I I time blocked like. Uh, I think it was Friday, uh, Friday, because that's the the last day that I can remember. Um so on Friday from nine to 12, I just worked on decoded volume two. That was it. Not, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to take five minute breaks at the top of every hour just mm -hmm. to give myself a quick little reset. Um, and then from noon to noon 30, don't do anything. Um, like just take a breather, go eat some lunch, you know, do, do something else. Um, and then another block of time would be, okay, I'm going to, start mixing this song down, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to work on this mix down for an hour. So I think like giving yourself a very specific amount of time yeah. to work on a specific task and you tell yourself you're going to do that the day before helps somebody like me, because I have so many different jobs that I'm working on that are outside of the Sully project on top of that. So it's just important for me to stay organized like that. Okay. I like that. That's awesome. And you mentioned resolutions. Are you a big uh, resolution guy? Did you make one for 2023 here? Yeah, I, I, for me, I mean, I have them written down here, actually. Okay, so <laughs> let me let me pull them up. Because <laughs> um, why not? Um, yeah, I, I think it's more like lifestyle changes rather than resolutions. Like I said, last year, I yeah. wanted to kick all the bad habits. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to like, like, let's say I were to, you know, unfortunately, you know start smoking nicotine again mm -hmm. at least i like i you know i i have no craving to do so right now but i'm also not going to kick myself in the dirt if i if i fail at the yeah. same time i think it's just a lifestyle change and i want to be committed to you know a lifestyle change at the end of the day um but you know like this year i really want to like just focus on my my physical health i used to be a division one college athlete and so oh, cool. being in physical like top physical condition was something i was always used to and it's when you sit in front of a computer all day yeah you're yeah. not going to get a bunch of exercise so you know how i was talking about time blocking at the top mm -hmm. of every hour i was giving myself five minutes like just this last week for example what i started doing that five minute gap was just do 20 push-ups 20 sit-ups right on top of going to the gym that's gonna like it's gonna keep my blood flowing um, I have a standing desk so I can stay in for nice. 30 minutes. So just adopting little things like that, plus going to the gym 70% of the time, 70% mm -hmm. um, uh, of my days, I think that's going to make a pretty monumental difference in my physical health. Um, and then, you know, just obviously finishing my record, like that's like, 
as far as music goes, that is yeah, all I'm concerned about. Yeah. Like, um, you know, and making, you know, I want to start making like visual assets and, and whatnot for, for my, um, for my music and whatnot. So or at least being able to communicate the language mm -hmm. because it'd be really nice if maybe I don't know the program or I'm a master of like stuff like blender or Adobe products and whatnot. But if I know the language, I could communicate better with a visual artist or give them a sketch. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just going to help me fulfill my brand um, vision, I, I guess you can say. Um, so yeah, you know, there's like little lifestyle changes, making it not all about music, taking care of like other creative aspects in my life and, you know, my well-being, like yeah. my physical health and, and whatnot. I think it's really important to make sure that my creativeness is, is going, you know? I like that. That's mm -hmm. a solid answer. I, yeah. I think, uh, goal setting and setting like resolutions and making those lifestyle changes is super important. So I'm glad that, uh, is something that you take seriously um and it sounds like you do a really good job of it especially compared to most people out there i'm um, getting better at it uh, you know i i think in the last two years it's gotten like astronomically better you know yeah, it, yeah i i think that's it you know that's the only thing um but yeah that's what life's about man just getting a little yeah. bit better every single day uh you mentioned you were a college athlete what sport you play i played soccer at okay. uh, western michigan university for a year um it's a very short-lived career and uh i'm not i'm not even afraid to say this uh i kind of like as far as like my athletic career goes mm -hmm. i kind of peaked in high school which is kind of <laughs> funny to say but like i was i was so i, I was becoming so influenced by music mm -hmm. um, later in high school and in college uh that i just i don't think i had the drive for soccer anymore um, and for the first time, like, you know, I was 19 at that time for the first time in my life, I was passionate about something that wasn't yeah. soccer. It felt like a sign to me to go after music full time because it got to this point where I had to choose. I knew mm -hmm. I had to choose like, all right, am I going to be a division one college athlete, which is a full time job and a half? Mm -hmm. I can tell you that firsthand. Or am I going to put all those hours into music? And for me, it, it felt like this big yellow bus hitting me. I was like, yo, you got it. You got to go for music. I wasn't going to be a professional soccer player. Like yeah. I, I didn't have the drive to be. So it was either I was going to end up falling in line with a nine to five job. Um, and, you know, I, my, I have two degrees. I have one in sales. and I have one in music production. So I was either going to do something in sales, which I did not want to do, or I could go full into music and go after it. So um I did that instead That's of playing true. soccer I like that chasing your dreams yeah. um so is that kind of where the uh the hard, hardwire jerseys that you have is that where those came from yes yep all influenced by I mean I still love the game don't get yeah. me wrong um but it's just like it gets so political mm -hmm. when you when you get up into like like more competitive it gets much like the music industry and everything else like like the, the higher up you go the more political it gets and while i understand that it just like kind of took the taste of like the love i had for soccer out of it when i got to when i got to college i just wasn't in like i wasn't having fun with it anymore yeah you know so i just took it as a sign and and went after music instead but yeah that is where the the hardwire jerseys come from those jerseys are sick dude those look Thanks. so cool Shout out um, yeah, yeah i know you were saying like they came out exactly how you wanted them to look like those mm -hmm. did you create that design so it, it elevate 08 executed mm. the vision like yeah. perfectly they they ultimately designed it um but the the <laughs> jersey design obviously derives from the artwork that mm -hmm. we came up with for the hardwire ep back in october so it's like we gave them the the file that we worked with the we work with the firm graphics out of denver um awesome graphic design firm um and then we came up with that concept and handed them over like you know all the adobe and vector files and whatnot and then they created the jersey design from them shout out elevator weight they're awesome they killed it killed it nice yeah they did an awesome job with those um yeah. i know you're talking earlier about um just kind of really like working on defining your brand and your vision um, for your project and everything yeah. what is what does that kind of look like for you right now mm -hmm. yeah it's it's um it's tough because mm. i go by my name yeah you know like i'm like 
Porter Robinson, you know, like, how do you brand that? You yeah. know, you brand, and I think he does a really good job of it. Yeah. Um, so I'm not like, obviously I'm not modeling it off of Porter Robinson's brand, yeah. but I'm looking at what he's like, people like that are doing, right? Like, how do you brand a personal image? Mm-hmm. And so um, I think part of it is just being yourself, you know, yeah. it, being as much of yourself as you can. But I also think like a good thing to do when you have a personal when you do a personal brand is to like brand it around the music that you're making rather than the persona that you're trying to perceive, like be perceived as. So Mm -hmm. like, and I think they both kinds of brand images work. Like let's take a, something like um, marshmallow, for example, Mm -hmm. right. He has like, his brand is very clear, right. It's a, it's he wears a marshmallow helmet. Um, He has like a mark of like a, a logo mark. That's, kind of fluffy you know like the the logo itself looks puffy and Mm -hmm. like he has like the the marshmallow head um in the branding you know like that all makes sense that that all makes sense like sully like i can't really do that you know yeah um so like it for me it's more about like just i think it's like taking the project that i'm working on right and creating a world around that and like trying to make it all like as i go from music project to music project Mm -hmm. making those cohesive um and the visual aesthetic and the uh um in the way that it relates to me making that cohesive rather than trying to come up with this i don't want to call it a gimmick but like yeah. rather like like i'm not i'm never going to have that marshmallow thing you know mm-hmm. i'm never going to have that um like that like where the name is so obvious what the brand is you know that's that's not the kind of brand that it is um so for me it's just about being like i'm really into technology and like uh, i'm a nerd you know like this has been me my entire life um like it for me it's like taking like the techie glitchy um kind of geometric like i always think of geometric shapes and whatnot um almost like a circuit board imagine like my life was inside of a circuit board that's that's kind of like what goes on in my head when i'm creating like visual aesthetics for my brand um and like bringing that to the forefront so um that i think that's probably the easiest way to sum it up but it's constantly evolving it's something we're constantly working on um but the main reason i wanted to go by sully when i first started was i didn't i never wanted to be pigeonholed into what i could make um and if i just go by my name that you know that kind of solves that issue like look at so i'm going to use porter robinson as an example again um just because one he's one of my favorites but two i think he's i think he's a great example of this when he started you know like language the spitfire ep it was definitely like you know like he i mean there was a whole electro and like slash dubstep project plus yeah. uh plus stuff like language and then he evolved into worlds which is like this ethereal cinematic uh like i mean i don't know if you if you watch the world's if you saw worlds live or if you've listened mm-hmm. through that album um but like it's a totally different world yeah. you know uh, and then you get to nurture which is again yeah. totally different vibe too yeah uh, so i i and then virtual self mm-hmm. like you have the virtual self project so that's or kind like of in the air to earth too exactly yeah. like that's kind of the way i'm thinking about it um mm-hmm. more so than how do i create like how do I create this, this brand that works, you know, uh, yeah. or, or this, this, uh, all these marks and these yeah. l- like logos and stuff like that. It's because t- that I think I'd be banging my head against the wall for months if I was trying to do that, you know? Yeah. That, and, exactly. and I think it's also like one of those things where you, you shouldn't have to tell the audience what your brand is either. Mm-hmm. It just kind of like, Hey, this is like, this is the artwork. And they're like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know? um yeah so what i've done so far is like i don't know if you've paid attention to my ep titles but Mm -hmm. that says a lot right there malfunction uh encrypted hardwire ep all of them kind of fall into the same vocabulary yeah and then if you look at the artwork the artwork actually mirrors itself too um so the artwork i'm using this like head fit like this ai head figure um and like all these geometric patterns and shapes and um you know kind of techie glitchy branding and whatnot and they, it's all mirroring each other from ep to ep so that that's where the the branding lies at this point i like that are there any uh 
I know you're, we were talking about Porter. Are there any um, other artists like besides Porter that you uh, draw inspiration from? Not just when it comes to like branding, but when it comes mm -hmm. to making music or um, just people in general that you look up to on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, Skrillex is just <laughs> like, yeah. it, it always like, that was like I remember. I'll never forget my uh, my buddy Ryan Scannell showing me um, Scrooge for the first time when we were I think I was in eighth grade or ninth grade something like that. Um, I don't even remember the first song that he showed me, uh, but I want to say it was like pre Scary Monster stuff. Mm -hmm. I like I'm not even sure. Uh, but like, and then he would show me like the Crookers and Bloody Beat Roots and whatnot. So definitely like that old like that like old electro artists skrillex like that's it that that's what got me into it noisia um always going to be one of my favorites on like a sound design level um but on top of that my friends honestly are like my biggest inspiration like peekaboo uh like i i don't think i could have asked for a better like a better best friend in this world um uh, not only just as a friend but somebody that inspires me i think he's like one of the most talented producers ever um effin like one of my former roommates one of my best friends detra um i think that guy is i don't know if you're familiar with his music but i think he is going to absolutely explode this year um and just reach new heights and he's a newer guy um g-rex like again one of my best friends so honestly those guys inspire me more than anything because they've been along this journey with me and they've yeah. been like my biggest critique my biggest critics and my biggest supporters um Martin Liquid Stranger, Champagne Drip, Lucid. Uh, those guys are just like, I would not be anywhere without them. So I think a huge part of my inspiration comes from my friends. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I know you were saying uh, Champagne Drip and Lucid right there. I know that was when you, that was your first ever tour, right? Yes. Yeah. What, what was that experience like going on tour with them? Because those, like, those are some I, big names. Yeah, I, I was just so grateful. Um, like, they I, I launched my project in on my birthday, March 6th of 2019. And it felt like very quickly the Wakan community, and I, I imagine this is because of G-Rex and Peekaboo, you know, they were already my good friends. Yeah. And I'm sure like because they were in the same circle as the art, current Wakan artists, it probably all came together pretty naturally for them to find out who I was. But it felt like overnight when they started supporting me and whatnot. And uh, you know, I'll just never forget they gave me the opportunity to remix Double Vision. And then they were, you know, reaching out to me about unreleased music and like, um, and then I got the opportunity to jump on tour with them. I was just grateful, you know, like, I, like, I didn't, it was all new to me at that time. And um, it felt like my first big opportunity. And like the first artists that were like taking a chance on me, were the people that I wanted to be in the same circle with in the first place. Like I want, like before I even started the project, I was like, I would want to be a Wakan artist. Like I dig their, like, I obviously dig the music, but I dig the community more than anything. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't even like really in it yet. I didn't even like, but like, I could just tell from like an outside perspective that that was the community I wanted to be a part of. Yeah. I feel like you fit in that community very well. I feel like that's, Thanks. pretty in line with your in, with your brand there um I know you were kind of talking about some things that you're grateful for um this is a question we always ask in every single interview um mm -hmm. at moon landing we love to preach gratitude and just being thankful for all the good things we have in life right now yeah um so like what are some things you're grateful for like inside music outside music like yeah what, what in life brings you happiness well I'm super I mean obviously I I I'm blessed to have the family that I do and the parents that have supported me the way that they, I wouldn't be anywhere. Uh, my mom's my accountant. <laughs> like, so that right there is just like, that. she's literally, she was literally calling me about my 10, like issuing 1099s to everybody today, which is funny. Um, so, yeah. Super grateful for my parents. Like they've, you know, they, they've only supported me and my dreams. Um, and me giving up soccer was really hard for them um because they watch they they watch me grow up playing that game and watching me quit something for music like was difficult for them but they've only shown me support and like have helped guide me to being a successful entrepreneur at the end of the day uh, my girlfriend super thankful for her uh she we graduated college and 
she literally like just dropped everything and moved out to California with me so I could go to Icon, um, at which I just like the most selfless thing ever. And so I'm super appreciative of her um, and the rest of the, you know, the rest of the family for the same reasons. My sister, her family has become my own. Um, again, my, you know, the producer community that I'm involved with, I've become like my very good friends. Uh, my manager Loper, um, who and Brianna, who I'm sure you guys are already very familiar with, um, you know, and and Chloe at Wakan, just I wouldn't be anywhere without them. Uh, Loper has become like one of my close friends, and um, and Brianna is just like the best right hand woman partner in crime ever. Like she's incredible. Um, so just really thankful for my team. Um, and I'm very thankful for liquid stranger. Um, like, man, like I would like, I know a lot of, I've, it's insane that so many artists get to say this, but we, I would be nowhere without him. And I, and I know so many other artists are saying that too. Um, like he, he was playing out my music, um, before, and, and like shouting me on the mic before, like before I was even anything like, it, you know, he was supporting me and he's, you know, finance, not only financially invested, but emotionally invested in my project. Um, so I'm, I'm just very thankful that somebody, and I've gotten to work with him. I'm very thankful that somebody like him would want to work with me. Um, on both a character level and, you know, a music front. That's awesome, man. That was actually the first time I heard of you was I was at a liquid stranger set and nice. he played a song and he's like who knows solely and <laughs> played that and i was just i don't even remember what song it was but i was like holy shit this, this i wonder if it was crazy. break the floor that was like Actually, the probably the no break clue, the floor but... was like the first one he was playing out oh really it yeah totally could have been but i just remember hearing it and then i like went and like looked you up and followed <laughs> you on spotify and all that no uh but yeah he uh he's definitely given um a voice to a lot of a lot of smaller artists um with yeah. the Wakan label and like you said like um he kind of did that for a lot of different artists um so yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people that share that same sentiment as you yeah. do there um mm -hmm. obviously you've been doing this for a while now you said 12 years of mm -hmm. producing music correct yeah yeah what's, what's like some advice you would give um to someone that's starting off with making music or starting off DJing or maybe has the dream to do what you're doing someday like what 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 kind of advice would you give to somebody like that man so much <laughs> it's a, it's uh like it's mostly because of like and i could only speak on my personal path right like mm -hmm. i like i think the biggest difference from when i started to where if you were going like i don't know if you produce music but let's say you were going to start producing music tomorrow the resources are way different now like versus when i started and starting now like the amount of youtube content patreons twitch streams like there's gobs of it yeah. um but on a fundamental level um like there's obviously all of that i would invest all my time into into those hats um you know but fundamentally what i would what i would i would recommend is start something new every day don't get hung up on like if I don't, like it's kind of like working out you're not going to get buff overnight yeah. or anything you're going to get buff over the course of like if you want to be the if you're the weakest man and you want to be the world's str strongest man that is going to take years mm -hmm. and ultimately hours of what you're going to put in and if you're working on a music idea and you're getting caught in this loop where you're not actually progressing forward because you're banging your head against the wall if it's good or not scrap it and start over because it's that repetition that's going to make you better have complete emotional unattachment from your early works of art that I, I mean that's that's what I would go back and tell myself and like because there would be so many times like even up through college when I would be working on a song for way too long and like not actually making the song better or the idea better rather I would be making I would just be like hitting the same wall over and over again, where I would actually make more progress if I just left that alone, maybe came back to it later and just started something new from scratch and to kind of keep that dial moving forward on your overall progression. Because, and I think this is like the easiest way to put it. Uh, when I went to Icon, I probably made 100 to 150 songs while I was there, whether they were 16 bar loops or full three and a half, four minute songs. I, you know, 
so many ideas that I wouldn't be, but I only released two of them. Damn. Uh, and and that just goes to show it, it wasn't until a year post icon that I was making music that I was super happy with. It took a long time um, to where I felt like, okay, I have my X factor. I know what Sully is, you know? And I think just the amount of repetitions that you put in is going to get you to that, not beating your head against the wall on the, on the third idea that you've ever made, you know, realistically, the good news is every idea that you make, it's, it it might not be overall better, but it's, Mm -hmm. there's going to be some technical aspect or creative aspect that you improve on. That's why you have to keep moving and making new ideas, in my opinion. I like that. That's good advice. That's unique advice too. I haven't heard that one before. Um, That's cool, man. Um, Do you remember when you first started like playing shows? um, Mm -hmm. Do you remember the first gig that you ever got? As Sully? Yeah. So as Sully, what was the first gig? Yes, it was my debut headline show. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I went back to my college town and sold out my first show. What Um, was that like? It was awesome. awesome. We had yeah. we had G Rex and Peekaboo as a surprise guest. So we did. Oh, a, that's awesome. I did my set, um, and then we did a a, a B three B at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was an incredible night. And then I went the next day. I went and played in Houston with Peekaboo. Um, so that was like probably two months after I put out free, my first song. Um, nice. I want to say like a month and a half or two months after my first song. Right. What's it feeling like when you like go to these shows or to these festivals, when you like go hop on stage to play, do you ever get nervous before any of your sets or is it just mm-hmm. like another day in the office kind of thing? Every single one. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a good thing. Like I'm sure that'll like naturally like go away a little bit, mm-hmm. um, but I don't think I've been doing it long enough for me to not get a little bit nervous. I'm just like, it's not even like nerves about fucking up or like, you know, making a mistake. That's whatever. I don't, I don't care about that. Like, yeah. honestly, it kind of feeds into the crowd's energy. They kind of like it. I, I think mm-hmm. nowadays when you mess up, it's like, it's kind of a comedic relief in this way, yeah. but not everything should be taken so seriously, but I'm, I'm so, what I'm nervous about is just connecting with the crowd, you mm-hmm. know, like leaving some kind of like, first of all, making sure that they feel an emotional connection with the music like what I'm making, but I want to feel that emotional connection too. Like I want to vibe with the crowd because that like, that's the pat, like that's where the passion's from, you know? Mm. Um, And I mean, there's been, and a lot of it is just a fun, like fundamentally the things that I'm doing, like making sure I'm looking up and like taking in the environment. Right. Like, for example, I played mission ballroom with liquid stranger last, last, I played it two years in a row. Uh, But the first year, I, I, I don't even remember looking up. It was like, I was playing in front of 4,000 people. I feel like I blacked out, you know? And like, while it was a great set, my manager was like, dude, you did awesome. Like you, you, you played a great set. Everybody loved it. I like, I didn't look up and take in that moment, you know? Yeah. And that's so important. You're like, like just appreciating what's going on. And I, I forgot to do it. And it's like, did I have a good time? Yeah. But like, there's this huge piece that I missed because I just wasn't, I wasn't trying, I wasn't even attempting to emotionally connect. I was just worried about not fucking up in front of that many people. And I I think that's like, like what, what is it at the core? It's like, are you having fun with what you're doing? Mm -hmm. So this last time that I played at mission ballroom was like probably my favorite show the entire year, because what was I doing? I was looking up. I like, Every new song I, I was playing that was mine, I was I was like taking it in. I was going, you know, like like beat for beat with the crowd. It felt awesome, um, and it was just like it, I'll like it was night and day, like the amount of fun that I had. Um, so I think that's like the thing that I'm more concerned about when I like before getting on stage. That's the thing I'm always thinking about. Nice man. It was okay. You, I know you said that was your uh, favorite show of last mm-hmm. year. Was that the most fun set that you've ever played? No. Well, it's up there. It's up there. Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, like you have like a, a top couple. Oh, I have a top one, one hundred percent. Okay, let's Bell- hear it. Bellingham, Washington, on the Champagne Trip tour. Okay. That was my favorite stop. That was my favorite show of all time. I and 
it was just the crap. Like I'd never played in the Pacific Northwest besides base Canyon. I played base Canyon. And this was like my first club show in the Pacific Northwest. And that's where like, you know, if you look at the analytics behind my music, my followers, that's where I'm actually followed the most is like Seattle, Vancouver, Portland. Mm. Uh, that Those are like majority of my audience comes from the Pacific Northwest. I mean, not, I don't want to say majority because like, yeah. but like the largest percentage yeah. um, of like, at, like listeners. So it was the first time I was playing there. It was just like, the energy was just insane. It was like a 400 cap room, like, like kind of a half dive bar. I, I've just never had so much fun in my life. It was so fun. Um, like just classic underground sweaty energy. It was awesome. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you remember, um, like, was there a moment for you when you realized that you had fans and people that, uh, like actually really love your music and mm -hmm. care about you as an artist? And like, did you ever have a moment where you realized that? I think, I think it's happened a few times. Mm -hmm. I think it's like, it wasn't like an all at once moment. I think yeah. the biggest moment for me was the first Wakan Fest. Okay. Um, I, I played the first set of the weekend. That was my first festival play. Um, and it was like, I wasn't even, I hadn't even had a release on Wakan yet. It was, you know, Wakan 2019. I opened the pre-party. Um, and just to see, like, I, I think by the start of my set, I had, at the at the start of my side, I probably had like three to five hundred people at the set, and then yeah. by the end of it, there was like five thousand people there, um, or whatever, however many people they let in for the pre party. I don't know. It was packed. Um, so just to see, like, even at the beginning, there was people like whether they were there just because it's Wakan Fest and it's the debut one, and they wanted to go watch all the music, or mm -hmm. it was like there was definitely fans there that were like let's go like you know like they were hyped to see me i was like dude this is this is awesome like i opened with frequency shift and they were like like i remember i'm still friends with the guy on facebook that's a funny his name's dylan he's from denver and i'll never i'll never forget like he was so excited that i was opening with it and like and it, like that moment i'll never forget that yeah you know, i I'll, I'll never forget that i didn't even know it. yeah his name's dylan uh, it's like it, it's it was a cool moment you know like you just see like fans like show up for you for the first time you know on a on a large scale and you're and you felt a part of the community so i think it's like little moments like that have just stacked up over time yeah. <laughs> um and it, it wasn't like an all at once thing but that was like definitely one of the definitive moments for me where i was like okay i'm i can do this you know people that there's people that are fucking with the music this is cool yeah that's awesome man shout out dylan yeah <laughs> <laughs> are there uh because i know we talked earlier about like artists you're drawing uh inspiration from in terms of like good friends of yours and things like that um mm -hmm. i know you mentioned one of your friends who's more of an up-and-coming uh mm -hmm. guy at the moment do you have like artists that you are seeing as like up-and-coming people that you think are really going to take off and like you yeah. want to shout, shout a couple of them out yeah detro would be the like i mean one of my very good friends, um, but he did lane switch with me on my brainstorm EP a couple of years ago. Okay. Uh, he's an incredible vocalist and uh, at, at sound design level, just like, like insane. Um, so good. Um, he'd probably be like, I mean, he's like the first one that comes to mind when I'm like, this dude like needs a platform. Like he, he needs to be lifted up. I really like what Ilio's doing. Um, he's a Wubbaholics guy. Um, just, you know, I've been constantly like, it, like more and more impressed by, by him over the last few months uh, as I've gotten more familiar with his catalog. Um, he's definitely a dude I want to shout out. Um, I think he's got a bright future ahead of him. Really talented dude. Um, I would say Iora. Um, he's a you you actually might know him uh noah sherman he writes for her here first um but he uh yeah he goes by iora very talented guy uh we have a song that's coming out on my next ep in may um or june june yeah in june um so we have one for that um master plan uh he's out of the dc area um he's got a, a tune with me on my uh album 
which I'm super pumped about. Uh, actually, it's probably like one. Of, it's probably like my top one of my top three songs on the record. Um, I'm really stoked for. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? There's one. Oh, uh, 58 Dust. Oh my gosh. Yeah, dude's a wizard. Okay. Next, next cone sound. Um, yeah, that's a tall order to fill, but he's yeah, 58 Dust. Nuts. Um, IDHS, another really good talented producer. He makes like like really weird experimental deep dub stuff really really fond of him yeah 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 okay nice yeah I was, you gave a solid list of people right there and i'm sure that means yeah. a ton to every single one of them getting shouted out by you like that oh i mean they're they're inspiring like a lot of them are, have become friends of mine so uh, iora and master plan the reasons i have collabs with them is because they're mentees of mine so i do tutoring outside of all of this um uh, like that's kind of been my second job if you will yeah. as sully um and you know just doing stuff like patreon and um i, I just put out my first sample pack so it's i've gotten familiar that, yeah. with these guys over the, like the last year and uh they're just super talented and like they'd bring me a song that needs critique and i'm like dude can i hop on this <laughs> like, yeah. this is awesome so like yeah it's just like a they, they've been really uh, they've both got really bright futures ahead of them and um i'm proud to have been a small part of their growth you know nice man nice um well i don't want to take up too much of your time i know we've uh, been on this call for almost an hour here um is yeah. there anything else that you want to touch on before we wrap on up here yeah i guess uh just like what's coming up next would be good yeah. um yeah so i'm doing decoded volume two um well i have first of all i have a collab with uh that's coming out on wakan um in a couple of weeks here um uh, with my buddy heritage and super stoked about that uh, so that's coming out on february 14th or something like that it's a uh, mid-february um and then decoded uh volume two which is my annual mix series that comes out at the beginning of march um, and then I have a couple of a couple of new flips coming out, including that Mount Everest flip that I I teased the other day. Um, and then I have a five track EP coming out in June. Um, okay. And that's, it, you know, kind of a same story as before multi genre um, EP and has like my most popular unreleased tune scuba on it. And so a lot of, I know a lot of people are going to be excited about that. And then, um, yeah, I start rolling out. I'm working on my album and over the summer we'll begin rolling out the album. Nice, man. You got a lot of fun stuff coming up. I'm excited for you. I think 2023 yeah, is going to be a, a good year for Sully here. I, I hope so, man. I'm working, I'm doing everything that I possibly can and I'm happy. So that's, you know, that's the main thing. I'm, I'm stoked about the progress and uh, I'm stoked about the, the progression. I'm, I, and I'm going to trust the process more than anything. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I think it's going to be a, uh, some really awesome things coming your way here pretty soon. Thanks dude. Yeah. But, all right, man. Well, um, if you don't have anything else, um, that you'd like to touch on, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, cool. well, thank you guys for everyone that's still listening. Um, it's been another episode of the launch pad. I'm your host Grant and this was Sully. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. Keep, keep it moving. Keep, keep it moving. Pulling on the pocket so heavy. Hey, uh, uh.